What's going on guys? Today's video is going to be swapping the hydraulic power steering out of my DC5 to the EP3 Type R electric power steering unit. Alright, so here is the original DC5 power steering rack. Uh, dimensionally the same as the EP3 Type R, the brackets and everything are different but they bolt up to the same locations. Tie rods are the same, tie rod ends are different between the DC5 and the EP3, I'll show you the difference. I'll, uh, I'll whip this one out and we will do a side by side comparison against this Type R EP3 electric power steering rack. Tie rods out, wheels off, cars up, all of that. Ready to take the rack out or take the brackets off from inside the engine bay. Good time to come inside. If you have a look just up here, you got two 10mm bolts. Uh, you can get away with just doing one. I do find it a little bit easier to just to whip off both at the same time. See if I can put the camera down here. bottom one I take out completely. This top one here, oh yeah, it's already a bit loose. I just loosen off. Always a good idea just to leave this. That's a bad boy here. Just leave this in the car so it doesn't get lost. Struck it on the floor. Makes it life easier. Pull this plastic thing off first. Because be all kinds of snagged all up here. So it's just this little thing here. Screwdriver, pop her out. Should come out really easy, even doing it single-handedly. Try not to scratch my paint too much. And that is it, that is out. Let's go over the differences between the racks uh, for the purpose of swapping the EP3 rack into your DC5. So first off are uh, our end brackets here. Oh, there we go. Completely different. This is the EP3, uh, nice and rusty. I'll clean that up later. Actually moves the rack forward quite considerably when it's mounted and bolted down. And the end does as well. I will note that you cannot use the hydraulic mounts or hydraulic power steering rack brackets for the EPS unit. So do make sure that when you buy your EPS unit, it comes complete, everything, all of the stuff, your loom, uncut I might add, uh, your ECU, just everything makes life a lot easier. Um, our second thing is the taper is smaller for the EP3 for your tie rod ends. So I oh, probably shouldn't really use used ones anyway, but if you have to, or if you're just doing this on a cheap, then they should be fine. Uh, the DC5 is larger, larger taper, smaller taper. Now, depending on what suspension you're running, if you're running EP3 stuff in your DC5, which is completely possible, or vice versa, you're running DC5 stuff in, God forbid, a DC5, it's this part here that affects um, which tie rod end you need. That's the taper of that. So, use the tie rod that suits the taper in your coilovers or your alien shocks. That's pretty much all the differences in regards to the two different racks. They will both fit by the car. I'm not sure why you'd want to go to hydraulic in the EP3, but if that's all you have laying around, maybe that's your only option. Um, so provided you buy your EP3R rack complete, uh, brackets because they're a nightmare to find individually. Tie rods, ECU, loom, just everything. Buy everything at once. It's cheaper, it's faster, uh, less hassle, and you should be good to go. Uh, with this one here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull it apart because there's, as you see, there's pink spray paint on it. I think that's a marking from the used car 
carbide's place. So I'll clean all that off, clean up the loom, clean up the ends, clean up these brackets because that one is really quite seriously rusted. Get that on the wire well and give them a quick lick of paint. Um, and I'll walk you through the process as I'm doing it as well. I'll probably just speed it all up so you don't have to watch all that dribble. And then we'll get it in the car. skip a day and I have given the brackets a good painting, a couple of coats of just jet black paint, nothing special there. Uh, now I am going to put them in today and what I am going to use, because of the engine mounts that I use, there is quite a lot of vibration in the car, so pretty much every single bolt I'm either using Permatex Red or Permatex Blue thread locker. Seeing as these will be in there, not really going anywhere anytime soon, I'll be using the Permatex Red which is the permanent strength. So you don't need to use much of this stuff. So now that we got the brackets in, she is ready to put the rack in. But before I actually do my rack, I'm going to re-sleeve this connector here. And this plug here as well, I'm just going to chuck some braided sleeving up there. And then I'm going to go over this loom here as well. I'm going to redo that, just so it ties into the rest of the loom. It's a little bit of protection as well. Looks like they had that underneath, just a piece of plastic. Just to, I guess, strengthen that, uh, that cable in there. It must have run over something um, in particular that they had to protect it from. Not too sure why that's there. Anyway, I'll be re-sleeving that, probably just going to leave these like this, tape them all up, sleeve it, heat shrink. Um, yeah, for now, because yeah, I would like to run them, hopefully they are long enough, it's just through there. So, I'm thinking, hopefully, oh, stretch, I can just lock that off and feed it through, out, across and back up to where the motor sits just over here and hopefully that will be it for the wiring nice and simple um, see what we can do on the inside really just winging this now we'll bring it in up through the floor somewhere so I'll bring it in just over there and We'll see how much cabling I've got. Might be able to mount it up under there somewhere. Maybe somewhere already for it. But yeah, swinging it, see how it goes.
done all that. This is pretty much the finished result. As you can see, I've gone around the back there for this part of the loom. And the firewall is just here, so you're not really going to see that, which is good. Still very well protected with thick plastic. Comes around, and we're going to zip tie this up somehow. Or maybe grab another one of those PE clamps and take that bolt out. Yeah, chuck another PE clamp there. Just a bit of support on this plug. Uh, and obviously it's just run all the way through, up through that plug. Should be able to feed these through, uh, these two plugs through that firewall. And that is it for the wiring. Well, for the wiring in the engine bay at least. Here we have the final rack installation, I guess you'd call it. So everything is in, all my loom and everything is running. You can see it just chilling out under there, it goes through the factory chassis grommet leading inside the car there. Um, I have started with installing the hard race adjustable tie rod inners and the spherical outers there. As you can see it's inverted, um, simply because of that. So that is not a good angle for your tie rods to be at. Uh, effectively, as the shock compresses, that's going to pull the wheel in and you're going to get not so much um, bump steer, but I guess essentially that's what you can call it, but you just get toe, toe out with compression, which is not good. But that's my next video, so if you want to see how those are installed, uh, check that one out. And other than that, I've gone through and finished all of the wiring as well for my application, as much as I can do, given that there is no motor in the car and there is no ECU in the car. But as you can see, looks pretty factory. Um, so I'll actually be installing my ECU in a glove box. I'll be running a Heltec Elite 1500 and a few extra little modules. I'll be mounting that in there and then under here. So under the carpet here is where I've installed the control module. This bad boy for the electronic power steering. We've got our three wires. That's all it takes to install into the DC5 chassis. There are a few others. I'm not sure what they do or if they're um, anything beneficial, but from the threads I've read online, you do not need them. So I wired it, wired it in as per instruction, um, floating around on the web. This one here is for the vehicle speed sensor and that needs to plug into the actual engine loom, which is not currently in here. I'll be running a raw wire loom. Um, so that still needs to be wired in. These two here, one is for the LEM, I think it's called, maybe REM. Um, it's been essentially tells the control module that the car is running. So it still hasn't turned on yet um, because obviously I don't have a ECU or engine. This yellow one here is for the ignition on, just to let the control module you know the car is turned on. We've just got our big power wires here. I've just used sub wire, this big one here, run up to the switch with a 60 amp fuse back there. Run along, that's plugged in. Our earth is plugged in on the other side there, if you can see that. And that's it. So where it's mounted is actually using the original ECU's two mounting bolts or mounting studs on the firewall, which is pretty convenient. Um, I guess depending on your application, you might want to keep your ECU there um, on the floor, under the carpet, whatever. So I didn't go into great detail videoing this wiring stuff because it's going to be different for each application. And yeah, like I said, I will be putting my ECU in there, easy access. And yeah, that is it guys. So hopefully you liked the video. And if you guys have any comments, chuck them in the comment section, like and subscribe. Cheers.